Hello everybody. Welcome to the Masters in Holistic Child Development program. And this is the first lecture of the Action Research course of the program. I want to introduce you to what we'll be doing in the next 10 weeks. Hopefully, we'll be able to get insights on what action research is and also get to do a full-fledged action research project. Well, the goal of these lectures is not to try and give you a bird's eye view of what action research is or try and cover all the theories, but actually the approach I have taken is to try and introduce you to three texts, three key texts that have been written on action research. Well, this should just be a starting point for you so that you can actually take these starters, as it were, and get on with your readings, your reflections, and finally, the doing of your project itself. The three primary resources for this course are some of the seminal works on action research. We have Gene McNiff and Jack Whitehead's All You Need to Know About Action Research and Introduction. We also have David J. Greenwood and Morton Levin's Introduction to Action Research, Social Research for Social Change. And finally, Patrick Costello's Action Research. As the title suggests, they are all introductory books on action research. And hopefully, through the course, you will get to read all of them completely. Well, what's my introduction to action research? How did I come upon it? Just a brief summary of that. My own research and work has been in philosophy and it's been in what I call the integral philosophy of Aurobindo and Indian thinker. However, one of my chapters here is dedicated to the philosophy of action. And there, as I was writing this chapter and researching for it, I was introduced to the work of Paul Ricoeur, a French Protestant philosopher, who talked about the theory of mimesis. It's absolutely brilliant how he talks about life in its lived reality and how that life has the ability to be textualized or to put into a text format in language. And furthermore, how texts have this profound ability to reintegrate itself in the world of action. And therefore there is a huge link between knowledge, philosophy, ideas, thoughts, and the lived embodied action. So that was an introduction for me and it really captured my interest. After my research, my own introduction to action research came through a consultation I did for World Vision. We researched a bunch of slum children from a slum community in Delhi, in India, for about a year, with a view to try and find out what it takes to do interfaith work in terms of development. And out of that came a handbook, a practitioner's handbook, to enable practitioners in development work, particularly in holistic child development, to be able to work in an interfaith context. So in that project, I was able to uh, practically go through the cycle of action research and um, it was an amazing time of learning for myself. Well, back to the three core books. What we're going to do today is we're trying to understand the question, what is action research? We're just going to get introduced to the terms and the terminologies related with action research. So my structure and approach would be 
to introduce action research through these three books written by the writers I had mentioned. We will begin with David J. Greenwood and Morton Levin's book which I had just introduced to you called Introduction to Action Research, Social Research for Social Change. It's very interesting to read their subtitle, Social Research for Social Change. And that itself must give us a hint that there's something more than pure research that's going on when you think of action research. This book was published in 2007. According to them, they define action research as a set of collaborative ways of conducting social research that simultaneously satisfies rigorous scientific requirements on one hand, while equally promoting democratic social change. So there you have it. On one hand, you're doing scientific research as any other traditional research would do, while on the other hand, during the process of research, you're actually able to bring about social change. This brings about a lot of interesting questions and hopefully we'll try and address some of them. The twofold purposes of action research, therefore, according to them, is that number one, action research is a research strategy in the social sciences, just like any other research strategy, be it qualitative, quantitative, field work, it's just a research strategy. But on the other hand, you have the second goal, which is to reform practice, to reform the action in the world. Now, this is something that often traditionally research has chosen to keep away from. And now, action research brings both research and reform action in the world together. So, how would an epistemology of such an approach be? Here, in action research, the local stakeholders, the partners, the people group you're studying, the community you're going to research, the organization that you're going to study and investigate, they are stakeholders, not just to be observed, but they are participants in the production of knowledge. So action research centers on doing with rather than doing for stakeholders. So the production of knowledge is along with the stakeholders. So let me quickly set up the epistemological debate when it comes to research in the social sciences and the humanities. On the one hand, you have the strict scientific approach following Descartes, in which you have an object of inquiry. The subject tries to take away all prejudices, biases, and is able to look purely at the object and is able to find out the facts of about the object. So you get into descriptive, phenomenological descriptions about an object that you're inquiring about. So the subject is in a sense dead, dispassionate, not involved at all in the production of knowledge. Now that would be, this position could be categorized or identified as in, you know, an encyclopedic, a modernist, a scientific approach. But in the 20th century, particularly after the 60s, there was a swing away from it, right to the next other end, where the approach was called postmodern or relativist in a sense, where the subject took predominance. It was all about the subject, their thinking, their language. And it was all about what they brought to the table because it was their interpretation. It was their view of the world. So it was less about the object and more about the subject. So we have this conundrum. You have the objective sciences and in a sense the subjective humanities. 
The subjective focuses on the researcher, the objective focuses on the object of research. But in action research, in terms of its collaborative venture, it bridges the gap and brings these both together. And in a sense, it lies within the domain of hermeneutics, in a sense, where this divide between subject and object is overcome. So now, there is a collaboration between the subjective researcher and the object of research, the community, the stakeholders. And it is together, there is, if I may use the term, co-construction of knowledge. So the philosophy is a collaborative, and a learning by doing approach. Action research also democratizes the research processes because it is not now an ivory tower seated academic who is looking down upon the world and trying to describe it. But actually it involves the local stakeholders. Action research is social research carried out by a team that encompasses both professional action researchers, which for me is you, and also members of the organization, community, or network. So maybe right here, if I may stop and ask you to reflect, can you think of a community within which there are children at risk? Maybe an organization, a church, a religious institution, or just a community, a deprived community which has children at risk, to which you have access. Because that's going to be the context in which you will find your local stakeholders and you as the researcher coming together for your action research project. Well, if you look at David's work here in this book, you find that they talk about three kinds of knowledge. On one hand, you have the theoretical knowledge, episteme. On the other hand, you have technical knowledge, called techne. And finally, you have what's known as practical knowledge. In Greek, that's known as phronesis, or practical wisdom, in the domain in which action research and its knowledge can be found. So if you actually look at what phronesis means according to Aristotle, he writes, although the young may be experts in geometry and mathematics, that is the theoretical knowledge, and similar branches of knowledge, we do not consider a young man can have prudence or phronemos, from where phronesis comes. The reason is that prudence, phronesis, includes a knowledge of particular facts, and this is derived from experience, which a young man does not possess for experience is the fruit of years. And in action research, this experience that you bring as a researcher, the context that you're aware of, the stakeholders who have lived in the context, who worked in that context, and all the knowledge, the tacit understanding, the, the worldview, being an insider to that problem, they bring that very usefully in the co-construction of knowledge. So you're not an outside spectator but you're actually an insider, a participant, working with other participants in the production of knowledge. So, the three components of action research. Finally, according to David and Morton, there must be action that's to be studied, there is research that must be done, and participation of both the researcher and the local stakeholders. Now, we move to the next source. Patrick Costello, in his 2003 book titled Action Research, takes a different approach, even as he introduces and tries to answer the question, what is action research? Well, he divides the question what is action research into three sub questions he calls them what is research what is educational research and finally what is action research 
So, what is research? He quotes Blackster, who's written in 1996, and gives a summary to the question, what is research? For Blackster, research is the basic characteristics shared by all of these, whereas these refers to different social, scientific research approaches. And what, is, what do they share? That they are a planned, cautious, systematic and reliable ways of finding out or deepening understanding. In other words, according to Bassey, it's a systematic, critical and self-critical inquiry which aims to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and wisdom. So of course, in these two definitions, you have a few hidden thoughts. There is the notion of contributing to knowledge, a knowledge that doesn't just come from reflection or thinking in the traditional sense, but for us in action research that comes and arises from the community and from the context. On the other hand, it also talks about systematic and reliable ways of getting knowledge. So the method is systematic. It's not haywire. It's not anything goes. I cannot just interpret something I want in any way I want. But there are frameworks that are set up. There are clear boundaries and rules that we set up in the way we want to conduct the research. So it's a systematic and also reliable way of finding out. But thirdly, and most importantly for me, it's a finding, it's a search, it's a quest. Meaning there is an authentic question at the heart of research. If there is no question, there is no research. Often, scholars can set up questions for research which have either been answered by others or in some sense they themselves are convinced of what the answers are. So although they may have a research question that they write out, in truth they do not have a question and therefore no research project. So I want to urge you as someone embarking on a research journey that the key thing you begin the journey is to have an authentic research question, a search, a question worthy of your time where you search for answers. The word re in Latin has two different meanings. Re is again and against. So a searching again. That takes you back to literature. What have others tried to, how have they tried to answer these questions? What else has been written and what are the other researches that others have done on the subject? Against is to say, well, this is what others say, but I'm critical about it. I can evaluate it. And then from my own research, I can add something new to it. So that's how you find Costello beginning to answer his first question of what is research. His second question is, what is educational research? I think it's very insightful for him to make the break and to identify what we're doing as educational research. There are market researchers, there are industry researchers, there are political researchers, there are all sorts of researchers. Actually, there are personal researchers that you and I do every day and today all we do is we call it Google search. If you want to buy something, you want to go somewhere, we are constantly searching. But academic research or educational research is a bit different from these researchers. So for him, educational research is critical inquiry aimed at informing educational judgments and decisions in order to improve educational action. I mean, I can look at this in two ways. On one hand, you could think of, in some form, a research within the discipline of education, which tries to improve pedagogy or curriculum development, 
uh, the different educational actions that are involved. Um, on the other hand, the research itself is educational or academic and therefore it strives to add value to the academic venture. That means it brings knowledge, new knowledge, new methods and in some sense hopefully what we do, what you do with action research will contribute to educational research. Well, this brings us to the final question that Costello asks. What is action research? So for him, action research is a process of systematic reflection, inquiry and action carried out by individuals about their own professional practice. That's where he quotes Frost. And then he gives another definition from GTCW where he says action research is a term used to describe professionals studying their own practice in order to improve it. And finally from Hopkins he gives the definition action research combines a substantive act with a research procedure. It is action disciplined by inquiry. A personal attempt at understanding while engaged in a process of improvement and reform. Yet again, like McNiff had earlier stated, that there is constantly these two processes, the process of research and the process of action, reforming the present action that is being studied. So in a sense, action research is described as cyclic with action and critical reflection taking place in turn. So the critical reflection is used to review the previous action and to plan for the next one. So we find that Dense Cone, and this again Costello telling us, Dense Cone talks about four characteristics of action research. Number one, is practical nature. You know, it is not a mere library research. You're there in practice, out there in an organization, in a community, among people doing things. Secondly, its focus is on change. And this is something we got to grapple with because I think it's important for what we're going to do in the weeks to come. You, through your research, are going to bring about change to a community, particularly in terms of children at risk. And it's going to be exciting because your research is going to contribute something new to a present situation and bring about change. Thirdly, it's a cyclic process. Next week, we are actually going to be looking at the process in detail and what are the different steps to conduct action research. But for now, it'll suffice to just remember it's a cyclic process. Action, reflection comes in cycles. Finally, number four, it concerns with participation. There is a participation of you, the researcher, with the local stakeholders. Okay, with this we come to the final text, the resource for our course. And I'm talking about Gene McNiff and Jack Whitehead's 2006 book, All You Need to Know About Action Research and Introduction. Action research for them is a form of inquiry that enables practitioners everywhere to investigate and evaluate their work. So again, you can see it's bridging the gap between a professional scientific researcher up there in a library within a university, secluded and distanced from the world he investigates, to a point where it empowers the practitioners, the people in the city who are working to enable them to research their own practice. So they ask, what am I doing? What do I need to improve? How do I improve what I'm doing? And their accounts of practice show how they are trying to improve their own learning and influence the learning of others. So in some sense, knowledge produced by action research is closer to the ground. 
So often the term grounded theory appears, that theory is developed out of the ground. We'll talk a bit more about it in the weeks to come. How theory or theorizing engages and interfaces with action research. Social scientists, on one hand, tend to stand outside a situation and then they ask, what are those people over there doing? How do we understand and explain what they are doing? So often this kind of research is called spectator research. You're an outsider. You don't want to pollute the data. And that was very much important in the Cartesian frame of doing scientific research. That the researcher must be dispassionate, without any prejudice or bias, cannot bring herself into the game, but has to stand out as a spectator. Peter Sloterdijk, a German philosopher, calls this approach, or calls this kind of a researcher, as doubly dead, or a dead man on a holiday, who is to be invisible while research is taking place. But on the other hand, action researchers are insider researchers. They see themselves as part of the situation they are investigating. And they ask individually and collectively, is my or our work going as we wish? Is it actually going all right? How do we improve it where it is necessary? And when this, these kind of questions are asked, and answered from within the community and context, then we get some real insights, real knowledge of what really counts in terms of practical actions that bring about change. Often a social scientist is too far removed to arrive upon such knowledge. Action research aims to be a disciplined systematic process, McNeil say, so therefore they have a plan. It's not that anything goes, you just go and do whatever you like. So actually they list a eight point plan. This very quickly leads us to the next lecture, which is on the process of action research. But I am going to lead us into it by stating these eight points without really much of a discussion. Even as you mull on the question of what is action research for this week. So, according to McNeef, what are the eight steps or eight part plan of doing action research? Number one, take stock of what is going on. Understand the community, the context you're going to research, take stock. It's like a baseline survey. Number two, identify a concern, a problem. Number three, think. Hypothesize. You, you think of a way forward. Four, try it out. Do some actions. Five, monitor the action. Gather data on how change has happened, what is happening because of your actions. Six, evaluate those changes. Evaluate the progress that's made. And you're establishing procedures for making judgments about what is happening. You say, well, I'm going to take their opinion, I'm going to triangulate this data with the community people's opinion, the community workers' opinion. So you come out with the procedure, how you're going to evaluate change. Number seven, test the validity of the accounts given by these various stakeholders. Don't just buy into what they say. You must have ways to find out if what they're saying is actually reflective of what's happening on the ground. And finally, eight, in light of this feedback, this evaluation, you reflect and you modify practice and you bring about a new change. Hence the cyclic nature of action research. With this, we come to the end of lecture one. Today, we have tried to look through the eyes of these three main sources for our course and try to answer the question, what is action research? I have just invited you into the subject, looked at a few definitions, looked at a few key elements, and looked at a few key terms that are used. And hopefully this will encourage you to go on and read these texts 
and understand for yourself what is action research. Do not forget to post your discussion note of 300 plus words on what is action research. Let me give you a bit of insight here. Try and bring these three sources together. Always practice academic writing. Pit them, compare them, contrast them and show the differences even as you show areas where they are similar. Evaluate them. Come out with your own definition perhaps. Come out with your own understanding. That's most important even as you reflect on it. And then don't forget to dialogue with one of your cohort mates on what is action research by responding to their note. My suggestion and my requirement would be that you finish both the discussion, the readings, the discussion and the dialogue by Thursday so that on Friday I'm able to look at all your work on Moodle and Saturday, Sunday I'll be able to respond to the questions you raise as well as I'll be able to um, come up with my work, my presentations for the next week. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the forum or write to me, email me, WhatsApp me, whatever. But put it on the forum so that if, if you want others to see it, if you want it to be private, you can write to me privately. Good luck with the first week. Welcome to the course again and look forward to journeying with you for the next 10 weeks. Bye now.